Join us right now on the set for the first time to talk about Bitcoin and a lot more is SEC Chair Gary Gensler. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be with you. So it's a, it's a month later, and I think we're all curious about how you think this is going, uh, not just in terms of what's happened to the price, but in terms of what you think is happening inside this market and, and, and whether you think it's, quote, unquote, working. Well, look, we, vote, we focus on investor protection and, of course, the issuers raising money. So uh, this product, we've had similar products in gold and silver, ETFs, you right. call them. They're technically exchange-traded products. Um, and uh, we approved a group of about 11 at one time. This was not the first way you could buy uh, or express a risk in Bitcoin. Um, but as we like to say, we're merit neutral. Uh, this was not in any way like an approval of Bitcoin. That existed. It's right. just how to trade it in these exchange traded products. Um, we've had uh, both a futures based uh, Ether and Bitcoin ETF uh, you know, before. And I'm curious sort of how you think that this is going to impact the price of these things, given that, by the way, interestingly, who, who was it Pomp who was just on? Yeah. Anthony Pompliano was just on. Uh, uh, earlier this weekend was saying that so few it's, it's Bitcoins available. are actually moving and what we should think of that. And, and merit neutral, I, I think it's a little less than neutral, uh, Mr. Chairman. It, 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 it almost was, we, we called it grudgingly uh, when you finally got uh, it. We, from, from the court case sort of no, forced no. in. Is it really just neutral or, or wasn't there a little bit of a, we're not sure about this thing in buyer so, Let me say it this way. Yeah. We're merit neutral. If somebody's complying with the laws, okay, so if they're giving full, fair, and truthful disclosures to the American public, who gets to decide on their right. investments? But okay? you, you're so but smart. Then, you're right. at MIT, and, and people listen to your uh, what you think about Bitcoin, and it, it is troublesome to, some, to, to me if I if I look at it and I see all the merits of it, and someone that taught about it and understands it seems to have the, uh, an opinion that maybe it's. No pet rockish or something. <laughs> <laughs> I get your I get your words about pet rocks and so forth, but I think we also have an investor education responsibility at the SEC, particularly about those uh, investments that are non-compliant with either the securities laws or commodities. or commodities laws and so forth. So here we have an asset class, all of these fifteen, twenty thousand crypto tokens. Yep. Many of which, without prejudging anyone, many of which are actually something called investment contracts or securities, and the platforms upon which you trade, the intermediaries. Right. They're not like in this building, NASDAQ, that's, that, that has protections and against fraud, manipulation, and the like. Um, Just seeing people lose their shirt on with NASDAQ stocks, You can too. lose because there's risk. Right. There's risk right. in investments. But, but what we try to do as a society is take some of the fraud and manipulation risk out of the markets by right. regulation. Is, is that the problem, though? It's not necessarily Bitcoin, Bitcoin, the underlying asset, but more the froth and the potential for fraudsters to use it that has well, been Well, this is concerned? a field, Becky, that's been uh, rife with fraud and manipulation. And look at all the bankruptcies. And you've, you've had on this set right. people talking about those various bankruptcies. And it's not just one entity. It's entity after entity after entity. And then investors are just lining up in the bankruptcy court. What do you make of, uh, this goes to the underlying piece of this. You've heard uh, Jamie Dimon say that he would close it down, that Basically, Bitcoin. I, is, I've, I've you've seen the comments, that. right? It's not just that you closed down; that you would say it's you know used by drug dealers and used by folks who are doing all sorts of illicit and terrible things. There's very few things that trade today that people talk about like that. Now, there are obviously frauds and things that happen, but maybe not like this. Like the dollar is like a hundred times more. Well, I, I know so. that's your perspective, but I'm just <laughs> but, but I'm dollar, curious how you think about just, that. But just, that's true, though. There's, there's, this so. is how much has been money laundered with Bitcoin. This is how much. This is Bitcoin. This is do, this no, is no, dollar. Uh, yes, Joe. But I, I, look, here's the Jamie Dimon quote: "The only true use case for it is for criminals, that's drug not, traffickers, money that's laundering, his opinion. and tax well, avoidance." I, I know, but that's we have a, a guess. That's his opinion. We have a guess, Joe. Right. What 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 is your opinion? And right. what is your opinion that we have something? trading on the exchange for the public that has this type of use case, at least as, as described by no, the president it, it, it of one is, of the it's largest the leading market financial share institutions in, in the it's, company. It's the leading market share in ransomware. 
uh, and that's publicly known. Right. You know, it's the it's the the token of choice for ransomware. Joe, if I can say, the U.S. dollar, the euro, the yen, you have the whole uh, society using it as a medium of exchange. We buy our cups of coffee, as I see here. Right. Um, we get paid in dollars or yen or euro. And you have a whole central bank and, and support for one currency generally per economic uh, right. region. That we don't have here. So there is a very real economic difference. Which is part of, part of the attraction, since it's decentralized, and, and you, can't have, you can't have a profligate central bank. It's not that decentralized, Joe. Well, I know, I know you're saying not. because of the ETFs, but, but, but really no, it no, is. No, it's not DeFi that decentralized, and because look how finance tends towards centralization since antiquity. Right. So what do we have? We have a handful of three to six core so-called crypto I understand, exchanges. but the asset itself, the way that, the, you know, the, the, that's the how distributed the accounting ledger, ledger. Right, that's, how, that's the how the ledger and... Now, how many times do you have people on this show that say, I want to invest in something because how the books and records are kept? I mean, Joe, really? You, you, it's just an accounting ledger, a clever... It's an ledger that, that everyone Nakamoto has, that something. everyone has and can't be double counted. It, it, it's almost immutable. It, that's, that's why people think it has. So you value. trust it more than an Oracle database, or you trust I, it more I trust than it more than a lot of... Than a lot of the, the, the Bitcoin bulls say they trust it a lot more than, than that's, the central bank that, that's, that, that, that's that enables the, the fiscal authorities to spend money to the tune of $33 trillion. Okay. That's, that's everybody's investment choice. But and, and, and then I think about how many there. things can be used in a deleterious way. Of course, but it, that doesn't, it, it has nothing to do with the underlying thing that you're using itself. I mean, I can go run a, a car into a parade and, and run over, you know, 40 people. That doesn't mean I can, we shouldn't have cars. Does it? No, no, no. You, you should have cars. I wasn't going to use guns because, God, I don't want to trigger, so to speak, anyone on the set. But. but but when the use case of a particular thing that you're buying and selling as an investment is just speculative investment. How many of the 90 percent of the people that own Bitcoin are using it for ransomware? For There must, be, an, you, well, there must be another you, use case that makes it so attractive to so many people. Speculative that, investing. Right. Speculative okay. investing. That's that's what. OK. Let me ask a separate question, which is just to pivot this, because I think the next sort of order event question is what happens to Ethereum. For those in the crypto world, they all want to know how you're thinking about that. And really, if Ethereum is a security, you know, how does that analysis differ from how you would think about Bitcoin? I, I, what we did in January was cabin to one set of filings. We have other right. filings. You're absolutely right. Uh, in front of us, but I'm, I'm not going to prejudge it for you or the audience. That's something that a five-member commission uh, discusses and uh, right. reviews. Let me, ask, let me ask you a different question, which has to do with indexing. So much of our market is focused on indexes. And you focus historically, or at least the SEC is historically focused on individual securities, right? Individual companies and the like. I'm curious whether you think that the system as it is today actually is working in the right way, meaning a lot of the valuations today you could ascribe to the fact, to the fact that certain securities are in certain indexes. It, was it, relate, the, it relates to what's happening to Bitcoin, by the way. So, so it's a great innovation going back decades ago, Jack Bogle, and right. as you know, you probably interviewed him when he yes. was still alive. Mm -hmm. Uh, invented this idea that you could democratize finance, that rather than buying individual stocks, you can buy the basket. Uh, why buy the needle when you can buy the haystack, he would say. And so it was very cost efficient, and it's a way the American public can uh, really participate right. in the stock market at very low cost. It's also led to some concentration, some centralization right. in finance, because when you look at the large index providers. If you're right. in the index or not in the index, it can be very And these days it's a handful, but the other piece of it is to these days it's a handful of stocks which often represent a majority right. of mean, the entire index. The reason you're looking for the individual value. The reason you're looking for the needle in the haystack is to find the needle. 
to get rid of all the hay. I mean, who wants a haystack? I, that makes that makes no sense. Well, so. but actually, <laughs> economists, Joe. I mean, you know this. Have studied it. But I thought about it. It's like it's the safety. No, but they've studied right. it that you get the no, benefit of diversity. And, and, and Vanguard does not. Five hundred guesses. Vanguard a doesn't have a Bitcoin, off. right? That's. They don't. They didn't. Vanguard do the, is not doing it yet. They, they didn't. They're, they're not the only doing ones. It. Really, the, the only of the biggies that didn't do it. Correct. Yeah, I don't think Vanguard. Actually well, they're did. not. They were not. Uh, they did not submit an application. Right. Exactly. Do you expect, if we're all sitting here at this table together in a year from now, that this dozen or so approved ETFs, that there's only like two or three gets even more concentrated, or do you think that there's going to be, you know, dozens of these things? That's really up to the market to decide. But what what you saw when this happened is. Fees came down dramatically. There was a bit of a investors benefited right. because there was a bit of a competition there. Investors also benefited from better disclosure because right. they, they, they have to do th things called registering with the Securities and Exchange Commission on those products. And investors got the benefit of any surveillance by the various stock exchanges. Um, but again, these are highly speculative, risky assets in which to invest. Uh, let me pivot again to a, a big headline uh, that happened actually last night. We just talked to the CEO of the company. I don't know if you were watching, CEO of Lyft just moments ago. Uh, that stock popped in this remarkable way, in part because in the press release, they had an extra zero um, on uh, their margin for the quarter. What does the SEC think about something like that? Is that something where you'd fine a company for that kind of mistake? Um, is that something where you say that's part of the business? Obviously, investors who bought on that, it might have been algorithmic trading. I want to actually talk to you about the impact of that as well. Okay, I think it's a responsibility of companies to ensure that they put out information to the public that's accurate. Um, and I don't, I can't speak to that one matter. I don't even, uh, you're telling me something I learned about a half an hour ago. Um, but in general, companies are supposed to put out accurate information to the public. But when, when they don't. If it's an accident. Let's say it's an accident. Immediately. Let's say a correction happens immediately. We can take Lyft out of this. I'll, I'll say that the, uh, the, the Sorkin, Quick, uh, Kernan and Co., we, we accidentally put oh, out a Kernan press release. Kernan especially. Kernan especially. We put out a, a press release accidentally with some misinformation. We corrected it within 10 minutes. It was uh, clearly not intentional on our behalf or on our part. Um, are, is somebody from the SEC calling us today and saying, hey, guys, we got a problem. We're going to have to send you a font. Like, what is the, what is the, how does the SEC think about these things? Let, let me see if I can just generalize and pivot to artificial intelligence. I gave a talk yesterday up at Yale about this. And so it's sort of like, what is the liability or responsibility of somebody using an AI model? And the AI model might hallucinate. Right. And, and look, we really don't want our advisors hallucinating on mushrooms, and you don't really want your advisors to hallucinate with AI. There's still a responsibility to uh, ensure that you have accurate information that you're putting out. And, and with the use of AI, um, that you have certain guardrails in place, especially if you knowingly know that it might hallucinate or know that it error, might though? front that, run in a market. I mean, that's an interesting idea. This morning I was looking at it and the, 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 it was algorithmic trading that bought into this. Most humans didn't react fastly enough or quickly, wouldn't have reacted quickly enough. If you had a human eye checking it over, you might not have thought it was rational to have a 500 in, uh, basis point increase in your, yeah. in your projections for your margins. And, and Becky, I think... Uh, and again, stepping aside from that one event last night, I, yeah. I really just Did learned you? about it. But whether it's a mistake or whether it's intentional, because also you could have people trying to defraud the market by putting out fake news releases. Right. Sure. And, and the, you know, so bad actors have a new tool to try to right. defraud the market. But and that... It's to protect the public from that. How much empathy do you have or sympathy do you have for al algorithmic trading, though? I mean, if it's... Well, it's a tool. Like it, it, it's existed. Algorithmic trading has existed for decades. It's getting faster, less, less latency, and it's also getting right. more sophisticated. The math is getting more sophisticated. And so if you're deploying a model, you want to make right. sure that the model has certain guardrails really to protect your bottom line and to protect the market. Let me ask you about another big topic that we've been talking about for the past week and a half now, 
which is uh, the ruling in the Tesla case around governance and the compensation that Elon Musk was paid. And I'm curious about it because part of the ruling uh, goes at the idea that the board of Tesla was, quote, unquote, not independent, even though that these, these, quote, unquote, independent directors were supposedly independent, that they weren't, and that they therefore did not negotiate in good faith, and that when they then endorsed this compensation agreement, the shareholders effectively, I think the judge would say, I don't know if she would use this word, were effectively defrauded um, and therefore voted with, with misinformation. What say you? Because you're, I, I, well, I think part of it is all of these companies are trying to comply with the rules around independent directors, et cetera. And where's the SEC play in this? So it's, uh, the matters you talked about, I'm not going to speak about, but generally those matters are a matter of state law and state corporate governance. The SEC has some role with regard to corporate governance about the disclosures around executive right. compensation, the disclosures about uh, the controls of the company and, and the like. Uh, but th th those matters that you're speaking about really are generally a matter of state law. But, but to a large degree, that case was about defrauding investors, shareholders that I would assume come under the purview of the SEC and whether they're being provided with the right information because underneath this entire case is this idea that these directors are, uh, are telling the public that they're independent, but in fact that they're not. And is the SEC supposed to step in in those roles and say, you know, here's a problem here? Uh, again, I hope the right. viewing public understands that it's the chair of right. a law enforcement agency. I'm not going to speak about right. any one circumstance, one company, and, and, and certainly other people's cases in right. state courts. But yes, you're right, the Securities and Exchange Commission is a disclosure-based uh, uh, regulatory agency, and it's about ensuring that the information is accurate, material information, right. there's not omissions, and that we protect the public against fraud manipulation, whether it's in, in these securities or it's in, yes, Joe, crypto securities. Right. Okay, I, I, thought you'd like I got a more job. complicated one for you. and. I don't know the truth of the matter, but there have been lots of reports, mostly in the Wall Street Journal, uh, suggesting that Elon Musk is taking uh, illicit drugs. I don't know if this is right or wrong or otherwise. The question I have, though, is the SEC supposed to look at this? Is somebody supposed to look at this? Is someone not supposed to look at this? Is the board uh, supposed uh, to look uh, at this? What, how would you think about it? Uh, no, I, I, I'm serious. You, 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 run, you run this governing body over... over Investors, and I think there are some investors who are trying to understand what they're supposed to think of these articles. Look, again, step. I I understand you have a role to play as a, a very talented on-air financial uh, journalist. I've got a role to play. It's also chairing a law enforcement agency. Uh, so I, right. with respect, I'm not going to be pulled into that. But we are disclosure-based. The companies discuss their material risks. Uh, that that. Investors get to decide based on those material risks whether they want to invest in that company or sell the stock. Should companies that have CEOs that <laughs> use illicit drugs include, He's good. He's good. include exactly. this in some kind of warning? No, I, I, I'm, I'm this, just this asking the question. You privacy issue? You, I don't know. You know how many drunk CEOs there are I'm that sure get up first are. thing in By the, the way, morning? I'm not here to, to... I'm not sure the stories are even... All of Silicon Valley is experimenting otherwise. with hallucinogens. They, they may you, be. You should have maybe at some point. I probably should have. I'm not kidding. You get to know it yourself might, a little bit. It might help my ability Introspection. to do the show. You mentioned hallucination. It's, I'm going to come back to artificial <laughs> intelligence. It makes it easier. Smart. But, like, if a company is using artificial intelligence in a material way, it's really about right. the bottom line, their prospects and the like, right. and that, that program has a tendency to hallucinate, they have to consider those risks and whether it's a material risk to invest. Can I right. just say, the last time I heard you kind of come back to an issue that you were very centrally focused on was crypto. So this sounds to me like you are issuing a message. The reason you're here today to talk about this is you want to issue a message to any company that is going to engage with artificial intelligence that they will be held responsible yes. for any problems with that AI. Well, it, in two ways, Becky. It's in... If you're an investment advisor giving advice to the public or you're a broker dealer using it, uh, to remember you still have a responsibility to put your investors ahead of the advisor 
or the broker dealer. So that's that's a conflict issue. But also, if you're using it, that you still have responsibilities not to defraud the public. And so that's about sort of having some guardrails. Let's make sure you don't front run, meaning take an investor's uh, uh, choice to buy or sell a stock and try to get ahead of them, it. put your interest ahead of them and so forth. So uh, yes, I do think that that's important because we, regardless of the tool you use, whether you right. use a hammer, whether you use just a little bit of algebra, or you use artificial intelligence. But it's not OK to blame a dumb AI program that, that did something we weren't anticipating. That's right. You don't, you don't blame a dumb hammer if you're using that to defraud right. somebody. Um, I'm just trying to say, AI right. is a tool. But when you use that tool to do bad things. Oh my god. Now you think AI is it's okay for AI but not Bitcoin. Well, how do you see them? No, I'm just saying you'd say it's it's a tool, but if you use it to do nefarious things, then it could but it's then you're saying it's not AI's fault. Well it's the same case. You just made the same case for Bitcoin. With with Bitcoin's a non security. But if it's if if now you're splitting hairs again. No, no, I'm not, Joe. I'm and and for every Jamie right. Dimon, I can raise you one Paul okay. Tudor Jones, um, one, they're, they're, hold on. one Larry Fink, one Stan Druckenmiller, one, I mean, okay. I'll, I'll raise you all, with Peter Thiel, Mark Andreessen. They, they don't run the SEC. I um, think we've established that right. Joe is not merit neutral. <laughs> um, That's right. Chair Gensler, uh, they're playing the music, but I do have to ask you one other question, which has to do with ESG. There's been a remarkable backlash on it. Even on backlash around disclosures around climate and some of these other metrics that you've been talking about. And I'm curious how you think about that, because you're seeing it from different states and, and investors, pension funds and the like, and it's become political. Andrew, if you look at the top thousand companies, so sort of the Russell 1000, about 90 percent of them are already talking about climate risk somewhere in their uh, annual filings. A little over half are already disclosing something around their emissions, greenhouse gas emissions. I think therein lies a role for the SEC to help bring consistency, comparability in that decision usefulness. But we are not a climate regulator. We are not right. a climate risk regulator. We're a securities regulator. Right, but there are some companies now that are scared to disclose some of their, their pledges or other things because if they do, which you would say they should. No, 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 I do not. We, we just then, say, they're, then they're saying that certain states, Texas, Florida, and others are going to say, you can't do business in our state or we're not going to invest but in you or what have Andrew, you. Andrew, there are many companies already making their disclosures. And if they're material, you have to make sure that they're accurate and they're not misleading. That, that's, that's the same role as whether it's about the executives. And it's the same thing if, about these right. risks if they're material. Okay. This has been fabulous. Come on back to the table again. It's great to see you in person. Right. Good to be thank with you, Andrew. Thank you very, very much. Becky. Chair Gansler, thank you. Squawk Box, coming right back.